Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. For any of you guys who didn't know, today is actually National Chicken Curry Day. Now being that I've already shared the traditional chicken curry recipe on my channel, I wanted to go ahead and share something a little bit different. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing a chicken curry that I've added Bora and Edo's into. This one was really delicious and it's also really simple to put together. So if you want to make this tonight for dinner, feel free to do so. Now I wanted to give a big shout out to J&B West Indian Supermarket. Now they are located in Queens, New York in Richmond Hill on Liberty Avenue. I'll leave all of their information in the description box down below, how you can contact them. And they do have free delivery. So being that, you know, COVID is still a thing and they want their customers to be safe, you can always place an order with them and they'll deliver right to your door. So big shout out to Alex for sponsoring all of the ingredients today and giving me all of the fresh ingredients to put this dish together. If any of you guys are new to my channel, I just wanted to say welcome. I hope you enjoy all of the content that I have for all of you guys. If you ever wanna see how to make a certain recipe that's not on my channel, just drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to get to that recipe very soon. And of course, if you are not subscribed yet, make sure you click that red subscribe button and the little bell notification icon. So this way you'll be notified every time I will post one of my newest videos. To start this curry, we're gonna start by marinating the chicken. So in my bowl, I have my mixed chicken pieces that are cut up. It's basically a whole chicken that's been cut up. And I'm going in with a little bit of black pepper. And I'm also gonna go in with some granulated garlic. Now you can use fresh garlic if you want. I'm just using the granulated just because it's what I have on hand. And you're gonna see me put some green seasoning later, which also has the fresh garlic in it. So I just wanted to mix it up a little bit. Now on top of that, I'm gonna go on with some onion flakes. And these are the dried onion flakes. If you don't have this, you can use the granulated onion or the onion powder from the grocery store as well. Now at this point, I'm also gonna go on with some dried Guyanese thyme. I love using this in any of my recipes. It really adds a nice rounded flavor to the dish. And at this point, I'm gonna go in with some fresh green seasoning. If you wanna see how I make my green seasoning on my channel, then please check out the link that I'll leave in the description box below. It's a really quick and simple recipe. It has culantro in it, um, some thick leaf thyme, as well as some pimento peppers, hot peppers, and lots of garlic. Now, once you finish adding in all of your ingredients on top of the chicken, you're just gonna mix it up really well, and you can use a spoon or some clean hands and just mix all of those ingredients well with the chicken. I'm gonna set this aside and let it sit for about 30 minutes while I work on all of the other ingredients for my curry, and then we can start to cook. If you want to do this overnight and then cook the curry the next day, you can do that as well. Moving on to the next step in preparing this curry, we're gonna start by grinding some garlic and some hot pepper. Now I'm using my mortar and pestle today to grind up my weary weary pepper and my garlic. If you wanted to use a mini chopper or a bullet, whatever you have on hand, then feel free to use that as well. So I'm just gonna keep pounding these until I get a very fine texture. And over here I have my Edo as well as my Bora that I've chopped up and I've prepared. The Edo, all I did was I peeled it and then I cut it into small pieces and I washed it well and I just have it in a bowl sitting with some water. And for my Bora, I washed it, chopped it up into my desired length pieces, which is about one to one and a half inches. And then I gave that a good rinse and I set that aside as well. Once again, shout out to j &B for the fresh produce that I got to use in this recipe today. Now you guys have probably seen me do this every time I make a different curry video on my channel, but it is a must whenever making any type of curry. In a small bowl, I'm adding in my garlic and hot pepper paste that I just prepared in my mortar and pestle. And once you add that in, you're gonna go on top with some curry powder. Now I'm using Lala's curry powder and I wanna thank J&B for sharing that Lala's curry powder with me and sponsoring that also for the video today. Now with that curry powder, I'm gonna go in with some masala and this is homemade masala that my family makes if you want to see that recipe then please check it out on my channel i'll have it linked in the description box down below and on top of that i'm also going to go in with a little bit of ground cumin also known as jira and this is freshly roasted in ground cumin that i do myself at home that recipe and that preparation will also be in the link down below so you can check that out and once you get all of your spices and the garlic and pepper paste into your bowl you're going to go in with a little bit of water and you're gonna stir that up so you can make a very thick paste. Now at this point, you can also add in a spoonful or two of some green seasoning, um, but I'm not adding that in just because I seasoned the chicken with the green seasoning already. So at this point, we have everything prepped and ready to make our curry. At this point, we're gonna start the cooking process. So in a heavy bottom pan, I'm gonna go in with some canola oil. You can use whatever type of light tasting oil that you have in your home that you like to use. Once that heats up for a little bit on about a medium to medium high heat, we're gonna go straight in with that curry paste that we just prepared. Now, I like going into my curry paste straight into that hot oil versus putting in my onions and aromatics first, just because I find that the curry paste cooks much better 
and it melds with the flavors and cooks down with the oil better. And once you add in that curry paste and you give it a good stir, you're gonna go straight in with some salt. I tell you guys, every time I make any type of curry, I love to add in salt into my curry paste as it fries up. So this way you can get a really nice flavor and a deep tasting curry. So we're gonna stir this up and allow it to cook for about five minutes until all of the oil starts to release back from the spice mixture and it turns nice and grainy. After about five minutes, you're gonna see that all of the oil starts to release from the spice mixture and you're gonna see that the mixture darkens in color and it gets a little bit dry and grainy. At this point, we're gonna go in with some sliced onions as well as some chopped scallions. Big tip for all of you guys, I've shared it before, but I'll say it again. Buy a whole bunch of scallions from the supermarket, give them a great wash, and then chop them up and stick them in your freezer. All you have to do is take out a handful when you're ready to cook and throw it into your pot. It's very quick and easy and something that you can do if you're short on time. So once you add these into your curry mixture, you're gonna stir it up and fry it up for about three to four more minutes until the onions cook down a bit. After another three minutes, you're gonna see that the onions cook down really well and the mixture dries down even more and it starts to catch or stick at the bottom just a little bit. So at this point, we're gonna go in with all of this seasoned chicken. Now remember I said I seasoned my chicken and I let it marinate for just about 30 minutes until I had prepped everything for my curry. If you wanted to do this overnight, feel free to do that as well. So once you add in the chicken, you're gonna stir it up and you're gonna let it bunge or sear into the spices for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the chicken releases all of its natural juices and all of those juices dry back up and then the chicken has a chance to sear into the spices as well. So we'll give that some time and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So this is what my chicken looks like after about 15 minutes of cooking with all of the spices and the onions. As you guys can see, there's no more juices left in the pan. It's very dry. All of the oil you can see swimming at the bottom and the chicken has had a chance to sear really well and deepen in color a little bit with all of those spices. So at this point, it is time to proceed. So at this point, we're gonna go in with the Edo's. Remember, I said I cut the Edo's into my preferred shape or size and you can do the same. However, being that I'm using chicken from the grocery store and not fresh fowl, this chicken cooks very fast. And if you were to overcook it, the chicken tends to like sh shred apart and just turn into a big mess. So in order to have the Edo's finish at the same time that the chicken finishes, I just went ahead and I cut the Edo a little smaller than I normally would. Now, right on top of these Edo's, after I stir them in, I'm also gonna go in with my Bora. I'm adding these two things in at the same time just because I want everything to finish at the same time. And I'm gonna allow this to fry up or bunge again for about two to three minutes just so this way the spices can sear onto the veggies as well. And then we'll move on to the next step. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my water. As you guys can see, I'm adding in boiling hot water so this way it does not stop the cooking process. Now, once you add in that water, you're just gonna stir it up and then you can cover it and allow this to steam down and allow those edos to get really nice and tender. Now, after I added in my water and I gave everything a quick stir, I just wanted to add in a couple pieces of sliced onion that I reserved when I was cutting my onions earlier. I just like to do this every once in a while when making curry because it adds a nice freshness and not only do you get that onion flavor that was cooked down from the beginning of the process, but you also get a little bit of fresh flavor as well. So this is the halfway point of my Edo Bora and chicken curry. Now, as you guys can see, everything has thickened up just a little bit. You can see that the Bora has cooked down a bit as well, and the Edo's are halfway cooked. Now, at this point, I'm gonna go in with some cherry tomatoes that I had frozen, and these are just going to cook down a little bit, and they're going to make that curry get a really nice little tang to it as well. And as you guys can see, I went in with just a little touch more water, just so everything can cook down a little better. I'm gonna cover it and allow this to finish. So in total, it's taken about 20 minutes for my chicken, edo, and bora curry to finish cooking. So as you guys can see, the gravy has thickened up really nice and it is not too watery and it's just how I want it because as it sits and it cools a bit, it'll thicken up even more. So I'm just topping it with some fresh scallions just to give it a really nice freshness. And at this point, it is ready to serve. You just wanna give it a taste for salt and any seasonings that you may want to adjust and it's ready to go. Before I go, I just wanted to give you guys the final look into this chicken Edo and Bora curry. I really enjoyed making this recipe for you guys today because it was absolutely delicious. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video today, you already know what to do. Please don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and give this video a nice thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet. It's very simple. All you gotta do is click that red subscribe button and right next to it, you're gonna see a little bell notification icon. Once you click that, you will never miss out on any of my new recipes. And of course, leave your comments down below so this way I can know what to make next and any feedback that you guys may have. I hope you guys give this recipe or any of my other chicken curry recipes a try for National Chicken Curry Day. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye everyone.